Hi everyone, my name is Robin Speziali and I'm the national best-selling author of a book called Market Masters, Interviews with Canada's Top Investors. So if, if you know me, if you've uh, followed me through my newsletter, which you can subscribe to for free on robinspeziali.com, if you've read my books, Market Masters, Capital Compounders, which you can get for free from me, um, you'll know that um, you know I've, I've always been a follower of Peter Lynch. And one of my favorite investment books of all time is the one that Peter Lynch wrote it's called One Up on Wall Street. And I have the book here, I'm holding it now. Um, I have lent this book out to so many of my friends um, who ask me, Robin, like, what's the one book that, uh, that changed you, that, uh, that, that made you a better investor, the investor you are today? I always say One Up on Wall Street. I lend it to them and uh, they just love it. It's my favorite book. There's tons of dog ears in here. Um, and you can tell this, this book is definitely aging. But there's one really, really great chapter in this book and one that I, I read and uh, reread every year in One Up on Wall Street. And it's, uh, it's chapter, let's see here, chapter 15, the final checklist It's on page 227 of One Up on Wall Street. And uh, I'm holding it in front of me now. I'm not gonna go over the entire chapter here, but uh, I'm gonna read to you uh, some of the key points that Peter Lynch says on uh, how to be a good investor and how to invite in the right, invest in the right stocks and how to be successful in the stock market. So here he says about stocks in general. So the PE ratio, is it a high or low for this particular company and for similar companies in the same industry? The percentage of institutional ownership, the lower, the better, he says. Whether insiders are buying and whether the company itself is buying back its own shares, both are positive signs. The record of earnings growth to date and whether the earnings are sporadic or consistent. The only category where earnings may not be important is in the asset place section. Whether the company has a strong balance sheet or a weak balance sheet, uh, debt to equity ratio is a key metric here, and how it's rated for financial strength. Then he goes on to say the cash position. With $16 in net cash, I know Ford is unlikely to drop below $16 per share. That's the floor on the stock. Again, he wrote this years ago. That was the example he gave. Then he goes on on page, um, on page 231 of One Up on Wall Street to explain more. And he says, here's some more pointers from this section. Understand the nature of the companies you own and the specific reasons for holding the stock. Um, it is really going up, doesn't count. By putting your stocks into categories, you'll have a better idea of what to expect from them. And uh, he talks about uh, the main categories here um, being slow growers, stalwarts, cyclicals, fast growers, um, turnarounds and asset plays. And then he says, big companies have small moves, small companies have big moves. Consider the size of a company if you expect it to profit from a specific product. Look for small companies that are already profitable and have proven that their concept can be replicated. Be suspicious of companies with growth rates of 50 to 100% a year, because that growth probably won't last forever, obviously. Avoid hot stocks in hot industries. Distrust diversifications, which usually turn out to be diversifications. Long shots almost never pay off. It's better to miss the first move in a stock and wait to see if a company's plans are working out. People get incredibly valuable fundamental information from their jobs that may not reach the professionals for months or even years. Separate all stock tips from the tipper, even if the tipper is very smart, very rich, and has his or her last tip uh, went up. Some stock tips, especially from an expert in the field, may turn out to be quite valuable. However, people in the paper industry normally give out tips on drug stocks, and people in the healthcare field never run out of tips on the coming takeovers in the paper industry. So that just goes to show, like Warren Buffett says, stick to your circle of competence, and, um, invest in what you know. Invest in simple companies that appear dull, mundane, out of favor, and haven't, haven't caught the fancy of Wall Street. Moderately fast growers, so 20 to 25% on an annual basis, and in non-growth industries are ideal investments. Look for companies with uh, niches. When purchasing depressed stocks and troubled companies, seek out the ones with superior financial positions and avoid the ones with low to bank debt. Companies that have no debt can't go bankrupt. Managerial ability can be very important, but it's quite difficult to assess management. Base your purchases on the company's prospects, not on the president's resume or speaking ability. A lot of money can't, can be made when a troubled company turns around. Um, Apple is an example of that in the early 2000s. It turned around when it shifted to uh, 
the mobile S curve of innovation, uh, investing in new products like uh, the iPod, iPhone, and uh, their iPad. A lot of money can be made when a uh, trouble company turns around. I already said that. Carefully consider the price to earnings ratio. If the stock is grossly overpriced, even if everything else goes right, you won't make any money. Find a storyline to follow as a way of monitoring a company's progress. Look for companies that consistently buy back their own shares. Study the dividend record of a company over the years and also how its earnings have fared in past recessions. Look for companies with little or no institutional ownership. All else being equal, favor companies in which management has a significant personal investment over companies run by people that benefit only from their salaries. Insider buying is a positive sign, especially when several individuals are buying at once. Devote at least an hour a week to investment research. Adding up your dividends and figuring out your gains and losses doesn't count. Be patient. Um, watched stock never boils. Buying stocks based on stated book value alone is dangerous and illusory. It's real value that counts. Intrinsic value. And uh, I, I, would, I would add um, growth in value and projected um, future prospects of that company. When in doubt, tune in later. So what Peter Lynch is saying here is that always keep a watch list and uh, maybe you'll invest in the stock later when you uh, do some more research. And lastly, his point here is invest at least as much time and effort in choosing a new stock as you would in choosing a new refrigerator. And Peter Lynch is just such a great guy. Um, and I think he was a fabulous investor because he really stuck to what he know. He was great in following trends. I think he was one of the first investors to buy um, into uh, Taco Bell, a lot of these consumer companies that, that we know today. Um, and he, it's just such an easy read. So this was his investment checklist from 1UP on Wall Street. I highly recommend the read. Thanks, guys. Happy investing and talk soon.